Hello Internet, welcome back to our Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead series. In the last episode, we went out to harvest some materials from local wrecks so that we could make a plow for the front of our vehicle. Or rather, I guess it's called a ram, but we ended up making a spiked ram and installing it on the front of our vehicle. Unfortunately, it does not have a sprite, so that's a bit disappointing, but hey, having the ram is valuable. We also installed the welding rig into our vehicle so we can now weld things directly from our vehicle power. And we finished off the episode by adding some more medium storage batteries into our vehicle's power system. We have quite a few batteries, more than we will ever need. And yeah, our vehicle's in great shape. And with that, we return to the game. Hooray. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Um, we are very hungry. We have actually plowed through the entirety of our meat supply. We, in a previous episode, we, we harvested a moose. And I really thought that that would be enough meat for several weeks in the game. And it feels like that was just yesterday, but I guess it was quite a ways back. Sorry, my neighbor's kids are screaming as they are <laughs> want to do. Hopefully that doesn't, you know, I keep saying that and I listen to the audio and I'm like, I can hear them, but just barely. So it's probably not a big deal. But for me, it's very distracting to have children scream. Did I tell you they got a trampoline? So like all day, every day, all I hear is kids screaming and like rhythmic trampoline spring sounds all day. So that's exciting. Let's cook some brains. Why not? I'm feeling, I'm channeling my inner zombie. Now, so organ, meat, and cataclysm, there's really no downside. I know some people, in real life, there are a lot of people who say never ever eat organ meat. I think that that's just nonsense. Uh, one, liver pate is delicious, and you should definitely try some liver pate if you have the opportunity to do so. And I understand something like brains. Number one, for game purposes, the calorie count is pretty low. Apparently, you also don't like eating brains, which I, I was unaware of. Maybe we shouldn't eat the brains because we want to do some crafting and vehicle work. And if our morale drops too much, might be problematic. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with organ meat. It's something that people do eat all across the, the world. And people are just generally in um, the United States, at least, seem to have a real aversion to organ meat. Why don't we, why don't we eat some liver? What's the enjoy, negative 10, oh well it's raw. Once we cook it, it will be better. And then sweetbreads of course are something that people actually enjoy eating. So I, I don't think that that would have a morale penalty once I cook it. Let's try cooking some sweetbreads. Just type sweet. Uh, what's the penalty? Minus one enjoyability. You know, there are some people who view this as a delicacy. I don't know why. It would be a minus one enjoyability, but let's make some sweet bread. They have more calories than some of the other organ meat. Uh, we can drop the baseball bat, that's fine. Nope, I dropped the meat by accident. So I just picked that up off the ground, off the dirty ground because it surely fell through the hole in the floor of our vehicle. Uh, and we will craft, we really ought to put a, why don't we put a workbench in here in this episode so this stops happening. Go ahead and cook, drop the baseball bat. Yep, just screaming kids and trampoline springs is, is my is my day to day. Let's put this baseball bat back inside so we're not constantly juggling this thing. Uh, drop the baseball bat. Thank you kindly. Uh, what else do we need for our vehicle? So we do, thankfully, we have workbench. No, we don't. We smashed them, didn't we? We had extra workbenches. Oh, there is one. Um, I would like to leave one outside for forge. Well, we can move the forge into our vehicle. Because we're going to take that with us anyway. And honestly, we don't need... I mean, we really don't need a forge for the most part. It's one of those things that when you're upgrading weapons, kind of in the early game, it's really valuable. It lets you make the Iron Shod Quarterstaff, I believe, is, is requires a forge or a welder. Uh, is that correct? Iron Shod Quarterstaff? Yeah, it requires an anvil and everything. Which, by the way, I think is silly. Uh, basically, an Iron Shod Quarterstaff, as far as I understand it, it just has metal tips on the ends of the staff. So like, couldn't you just take a sheet metal and hammer and and put, you know, it's, it's just putting metal on the end of a stick. So I don't know that we need an anvil and a forge and all that nonsense, but whatever. Um, when, when you're upgrading your weapons, the forge is like hugely valuable. It's a gatekeeper. It keeps you from getting to, like our steel spear is a forge recipe. I personally, my end game weapon of choice is the war hammer. Do we have the recipe for that? We don't. The War Scythe is also apparently really good, but I, I've never really played with it. Man, 59 total damage, and Brutal Strike is a good one as well. Uh, wide Strike, not so much. I don't often find myself having that many enemies around me at once, but 
But anyway, uh, the Warhammer is my go-to endgame weapon, which isn't even the best one because it splits its damage and it's not super great. But but this is a gatekeeper. For The Forge keeps you from making the high tier weapon recipes. I just don't know that we need one at this point. We, we're going to end up pivoting to firearms for the most part. Anyway, let's, uh, let's see what it takes to install a workbench here. Let's just check on one of these random tiles. Let's go to bench, I assume. Workbench requires a workbench, which we do have a surplus of. And bolt turret. That's it. That's very easy to put in. Very good. Um, so let's pull. Okay, unsorted. How do I do this? Um, let's. Okay. Well, we know from our previous episode that you don't need to tie it to a vehicle part in order for unsorted to work. So let's just encompass all of this here. Save changes. And then sort did I screw it up in any way did I include my freezer I don't want my freezer getting sorted unsorted I did not so we should be okay to sort yeah it's gonna take a minute we, we picked up quite a bit of stuff while we were on the road especially a lot of scrap materials which take a long time because they're treated as individual items and you did not sort everything why small electric motor means nothing to me the regular electric motors kind of do. I would like to put one in my vehicle. What else do we have? And then vehicle parts. We can leave those in here. Um, in fact, let's move. Well, if we're going to keep them in here, we should put them on the outskirts of the vehicle. That way they're not taking up my valuable interior. So let's make a tile for vehicle parts. Vehicle parts. And we'll just tie that to this. And then let's make another one because they are kind of big vehicle parts. So let's give them two tiles and then save this and sort and they should all be moved back there. Why'd you come inside to do that though? Okay, so they should be on the exterior now. That's great. Um, and let's take out this cargo space. So we'll go to the kitchen unit and we'll come across from that because we have the kitchen, un the welder kitchen unit and mini freezer and we want the workbench to be adjacent to us if we stand in front of the kitchen unit that way we can hit all of our tool items all really close together so let's pull out the cargo space and install oh let's go retrieve the workbench uh we would have to drag it through here which would no it doesn't interfere with item piles we can do that so let's grab this bad boy i forgot we had washing machines in here as well so if we if we did end up wanting one, we saw one in the RV and we didn't want it. But if we change our mind, we do have the material. Oh, there is stuff in the way. Okay, well that makes it a little bit more <laughs> difficult, but we can we can finagle our way through here. Do you, do you ever say that word, internet finagle? Have you ever heard that word before? Seems like a weird word I've never, <laughs> I don't know. It's just one of those. So I grew up in an old fashioned household uh, once I moved away from the city, uh, I mostly lived with some older people and I picked up a lot of their old slang, which is uh, stuff that people point out sometimes. They're like, did he really just say jive? And I'm like, yeah, I, uh, you know, it's just a word I use. I know it's kind of old fashioned and whatever, but so why can't I install you? You're too far away probably, huh? I really don't want to take off a wall to put you in. Let's try... Oh geez, uh, let's, it, 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 it's literally too far in the center of our vehicle. I don't think we're going to be able to do this. This is as close as we're going to get. Let's try again. Install. Yeah, we're going to have to take out the wall of our vehicle. That's a bummer. Uh, alrighty. Let's take this one out. So two back from the door, rip this stow board off. We're not using it for anything, so it's okay. Now we should be able to install our workbench. Sucks when that happens. Sometimes you gotta do that sort of thing. I still can't do it, huh? I have a workbench. It's right here. It, it literally is called workbench. Does it have to be an item? It does. Well, that sucks. Why? Could I not use a furniture workbench for this? That's disappointing. All right, so we got to make one ourselves. Uh, I don't think we have pipe fittings. We have everything else. All right, well, that was a waste of time. So let's move this 
crap out of the way here. In fact, let's put it all the way across the street. That way I don't drive into it thinking it's a, an item. So we didn't have to take off the wall. <laughs> it just could not use the workbench. So let's reinstall our stove board. Oh God, and now I gotta figure out which one it was. Okay, it's, it's the right side vertical. Please be correct. Great, okay. <laughs> we had trouble with that before. Um, do, 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 we can go in. We might have pipe fittings. Workbench. Nope. Oh, we're missing sheet metal. That is surprising. Let's go disassemble some stoves. I don't think we ever harvested stoves, so they should be around in the neighboring houses. Uh, and let's just dis deconstruct. It should give us what we need here just from one. If we deconstruct it, two sheet metals. Thank you kindly. Can't, can't carry more than one apparently. All right, well, let's drop the sheet metal and let's just haul this stuff back to base. Always something, always, you know, something making things a little bit more difficult. I suppose we should get a random question as well. So we have some jumping off point for us to have a conversation. So let's do that. Let's grab ourselves a random question. Click, scroll, click, uh, what? How have your strengths helped you to succeed? Okay. Uh, you know, I don't often talk about positive things. Might as well, I guess. Uh, do we want... We'll take this inside because that's where all of our other materials are. That way we're guaranteed really to get what we need. This is not the unsorted pile. So I just screwed that up. So that's exciting. <sighs> that's that's fine. All right. Um, craft a workbench. How have my strengths helped me succeed? Well, in general... Oh, we need the welder. Um, let's just haul this crap outside. Who cares, man? This is this is not fun. All right, I just want to make a workbench, bro. Oh my god, what now? Now I don't have pipes. Something is ringing outside as well. Is that the? That might be the snow cone lady. I don't know what the jingling is in the background. <sighs> looking for pipes 26 pipes yeah I don't need 26 pipes I need I think 12 pipes of course I can't pick them up they're too big not enough you can't even pick up more than one pipe bro oh my god okay pull out the pipes this is infuriating I just want to make a bench move that crap out here oh of course then I put it on the wrong tile of course I did at my feet give me the pipes Oh my God. I saw pipe fittings in there too somewhere. I don't want to lose those as well. All right, work bench. Thank you, God. All right, how have my strengths helped me succeed? <sighs> well, I mean, I haven't succeeded. <laughs> it's, the, it's the basic answer. We're very weary. Let's uh, cook ourselves some dinner and we'll head off to bed here. I have not succeeded at this point in my life. I'm still very much in the process of succeeding. I do think I have what it takes to be successful. Um, I think that I'm intelligent, which is probably my my most key asset in, in, in going forward. I am dopey. Like if you listen to this content, I'm sure that you think of me as kind of a goofy person and that is valid. I am very goofy. Um, but I'm also very capable of learning new things. I'm, 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 for the most part, I learn things very quickly and easily. It's just uh, some super technical stuff gets me down. Like we've talked about a million times how I was learning to code, but then found out I'm kind of an idiot and had a hard time with it because it's very technical and I hate technical things. But I think my intelligence in general is my greatest asset. I think it helped me out a lot when I was younger. I would. Uh, in school, I would never do my homework. I just, uh, like, I, I always would fail. Basic, So basically, your grade in school was broken down into two main components. You had homework and you had tests. And that consisted of your entire, like, your entire grade was made up of those two things. Every now and then, you would have something where you got to give a speech or, or do a project in front of the class, that sort of thing. But for the most part, it could be broken down as homework or testing. Basically, I just listened and memorized everything. So I would do excellent on tests, but I would not do my home. I, I can't, I never did homework. Uh, and so my intelligence and my ability to memorize information quickly and easily is the only reason 
that I have passed high school. Um, and when I would have a class that was consisting mostly of homework, I would fail those classes or I would do really poorly. I barely graduated because I just did not apply myself in like my junior year. Um, when it, when I had a lot of those classes where you had to do a lot of homework. And so I graduated near the bottom of my class. I did really poorly despite being a very smart, you know, guy. And, uh, but the only reason I made it through is because I could easily memorize things. So like, that's been my greatest asset my whole, my whole life. Um, so that definitely is my strength is my ability to memorize information very quickly and easily. You know, obviously like we're like, I'm playing Cataclysm. Cataclysm has a ton of stuff that, you know, it's much easier once you memorize things uh, and, and learn, you know, how things work and, and you store a lot of information in your head. It's why I did, when I was a kid, I played NetHack. And like back then I didn't know about spoilers or, or that there were guides out there. I did everything manually. So basically I would play NetHack and I'd be like, okay, well I ate that kobold and it poisoned me. And every time I eat a kobold, it's poisonous. So I guess kobolds are poisonous. So you just memorize that little random fact and store it in your brain. And then next game, you don't do that, right? And so I remember playing NetHack and just, I, I never looked up guides or anything. I always just learned on my own. And it was slow and tedious and horrible. And I did, you know, struggled a lot because it's a very complicated game with a lot of meta information that you need to know. But uh, over time, I grew to love it because of that, because I knew that I had learned it on my own and, and memorized a lot of it myself, which was a uh, point of pride to me when I was like 10, you know, that I that I had played a game and, and done pretty well. I never beat NetHack as a kid uh, or ever. I don't think I've ever beaten NetHack, actually, but I've, I've obviously I've done pretty well. And uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I just when I was a kid, I took pride in that, which is a weird thing to take pride in. But Anyway, so probably my intelligence is like my number one strength and, and asset in, in the world. And it's served me very well in my life. You know, I think that I've been in a lot of situations where if I was a dumb person or a person who didn't learn very well, I think that it would have been very difficult for me, you know. Uh, and I'm not saying that people who are bad testers or dumb or anything like that or, you know, uh, people who are unintelligent or like lower intelligence. I'm not trying to disparage those people. I just think that my intelligence has been very key to my life and without it, I don't know what I would do. And then in the confines of something like uh, YouTube, because obviously I like YouTube and I, I do YouTube stuff. Um, I think my ability to talk is my key asset. So like I, I occasionally get comments. I actually just got a comment the other day from someone who they kind of said like, oh, hey, you know, I just found your content. It's pretty good, but you talk a lot. Like they weren't being nasty or anything, but they were like, you know, you talk a lot about your personal stuff. I'm more interested in the game. And I get those comments pretty, not, not super frequently anymore, but when I first started, there were a lot of people who were like, hey, you should just be Vormithrax. You should just talk about the game and min-max and all this. And I told them like, you know, that's not me. Yeah, that's not really what we do here. I'm more about uh, flow of consciousness. I, I just want to talk about my life and my personal experiences and tell you anecdotes from my life. And because that's what I respond to when I watch YouTube. Like I, 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 I learned Cataclysm by watching Vorm, just like everyone else. But I realized after a while I had watched him for months and I didn't know anything about him. Like I didn't know his real name. I didn't know did he have a family? What did he do for a living? Is he retired? Is he a full-time YouTuber? What's his deal? Like, I didn't know anything about the man behind the channel. And I really didn't like that. I wanted a personal connection. Like, the people that I watch on YouTube are people that I want to connect with on a personal level. I might never be able to do that, right? Because a lot of people don't make themselves available to their audience and whatnot. But, like, I want to know who they are, you know? Uh, because it's, it's like... That's what I gravitate towards. I want to know you better as a person. So when I started YouTube, I was like, that's what I want to be. I want to be flow of consciousness. I want to talk about whatever pops in my head and people will enjoy that. People will enjoy getting to know me. Uh, and then I was streaming for a while. And when I streamed, like you would see the, the people who are popular on, on Twitch, it seemed like it was a lot of young gamers who were like super good, right? Shroud, right? Shroud is one of the best FPS players 
on the planet, undisputably one of the best first person shooter players on on earth, okay? Uh, and people watch him because he is phenomenal at the game that he plays. Whatever the game is, whatever, you know, if he's playing Apex or PUBG, it doesn't matter, Warzone, it, you know that if you show up to his stream, you're getting one of the best players in the world. And so people on Twitch, it seems like they gravitate towards skill level, but those people often, now Shroud's an exception. I think he's a decent entertainer. I don't have a problem with Shroud. I'm not calling him out. But there are a lot of other streamers, they don't talk to their audience. They don't even talk half the time. Half the time, when I go to watch a Twitch stream, because I'm in the mood for live interaction, I go there and it's literally 45 seconds of dead silence, of people not talking. And it's like, man, if these people ever learned to talk <laughs> and engage with their audience, they would be mega successful. But because they're not doing that, they're stagnating. So if everything I see, feedback wise encourages me to be more personal and talk more about my personal life um so that's just that's what i do that's my jam that's what i enjoy and hopefully that's what my audience enjoys as well obviously it's working my numbers have been going up over the last you know couple of years and people seem to like me do you like me internet you probably like me anyway uh so we've done a lot of work with our vehicle so let's talk about our vehicle we have everything now really that we need to be a completely mobile base. We have the ra the Ram on the front, which, you know, you don't need this on a vehicle, but it's just so beneficial. It, it adds that extra damage that can make it easier to traverse right through a crowd of zombies if they're coming at you, right? So I think the Ram is a good step. Um, we have the kitchen unit, which is super valuable. We, we need to be able to cook directly from our vehicle's power source. So we have that. We only have one tank. We should put a tank of water in here. Maybe we'll do that next. Um, and because this also has a faucet, I believe, so we can drink directly from our vehicle tanks. So the kitchen unit, hugely valuable. We have the freezer, which will allow us to preserve any food we want pretty much permanently, must have in a vehicle. We have the welding rig, which will enable us to make any repairs on the road with uh, directly from our vehicle's power, instead of carrying around a bunch of batteries and trying to micromanage batteries and stuff. We have a bed, which will enable us to sleep in our vehicle. And we have a workbench, which will make crafting a little bit more tolerable. The only other thing I normally put in, sometimes I put a forge in here. I don't think we need that because we have the portable forge that we can just use heavy batteries for. It would be better to draw power directly from our vehicle, but it's also, it's a once in a while vehicle tile. It's not something we need in every you know, every excursion, every, you know, we would use it once every week or two in game, right? So I don't think that's necessary. Uh, also, I am using cargo spaces everywhere. Sometimes I get people who comment, say, hey, why don't you put an aisle? Um, because if you look here, when I move, it says it's slow because this is difficult terrain, which I understand could be problematic in certain situations, but I would much rather have the extra storage capacity than a slight boost to my movement through my own vehicle because for the most part we will never be fighting enemies in our vehicle so it's irrelevant whether it takes us an extra couple moves or not so i don't think that that is an issue we put stow boards on every part of our vehicle instead of regular boards i think that's just a little extra space we have curtains on the window i think this beautiful this beautiful vehicle is is good to go i, I can't think of anything else that i really need in my vehicle uh, we talked about the dishwasher and washing machine previously. I just don't see them as valuable enough to take up space in this vehicle. So I think we are good, man. I think we're ready to get on the road and start exploring more. Our uh, solar panels do look a bit janky. I would like if they, if we had four more, so we could fill out this actual like it, this uh, this view from the exterior. But we'll find them eventually. Um. Let's go get a vehicle tank, I guess, and we'll fill it up with water and plop that in our vehicle as well. Uh, and, you know, and I don't think it has to be clean water. We could boil water and fill it with clean water, but, like, that's just tedious, you know? Like, if we put it if we put it in a vehicle tank, so my dogs are barking, sorry about that. Uh, if we put it in a vehicle tank, we can cook with it. So I can just boil water directly out of it and fill a couple jugs when I want to. I don't think it's necessary to make that like a permanent fixture of clean water. 
Let's grab a 60 liter. Oh, you only have 20 liter tanks. That's not going to work for me. We're going to find a vehicle with a 60 liter tank here. They are the standard. Fortunately, that one is leaking. Good thing there are vehicles everywhere. Oh, that's a crash. We don't want that. And this one has a little gas in it. That's okay. We can dump that in our vehicle. Currently in Cataclysm, there's no penalty for using a gasoline tank that has gasoline. You don't have to clean it or anything. You can just put water in it once you remove the gas and it's no big deal. Question is, which tank is which? Does it say... Where's the tank? Okay, so that one matches up durability-wise, so we know that's the one that's not draining. So go ahead. Nope, that's a board. Didn't mean to take that. And we'll grab this beautiful tank. Oh, it is huge, of course. We'll haul this back to base. It'll be faster that way. Um, rather than trying to... Actually, it wouldn't be faster, I guess. Our hands are empty, so we could have just picked it up. Anyway, doesn't matter. And we might go out and harvest a little extra gas as well, but it's so unnecessary. Let's drop this stuff. Let's install... Oh no, let's unload the tank and fill our car. Which is hilarious that we basically just picked up a 60 liter tank and tipped it over, pouring the gas into our vehicle. I don't think we have a funnel. I don't think we have a hose or anything, so we just sort of dumped it in there. All right, yeah, 16 liters is plenty of gas. We, we can fill up basically anywhere in the world on gasoline without any real issues. So I don't see that as being a huge uh, barrier. So let's just uh, go fill. Oh wait, we can't fill it. We have to install it while it's empty. We'll just put this in the middle, it doesn't matter. It's just gonna be water. Um, Why can't I install the tank? Oh, is there a tank here already? Oh, do they conflict with batteries? I bet they do. So we only have a few places we could install this because we have ba basically, we have batteries everywhere in our vehicle. Tank? Why can't I install you? Oh, we don't have a drill. Um, Do we not have a drill? I don't think we do. Remember we ran into this before and we didn't have a drill? Okay. Uh, I mean, we can make one if we don't have one. Where's my tools pile? Nope, random crap. Nope. <laughs> There's so much crap here. Uh, what are you? Your food. Are you tools? Your medical. Miscellaneous. Where's my tool pile? Oh, I bet I dragged them outside by accident. I sure did. Okay, well, let's haul this back inside. And we'll sort everything out again. Sort your Sort your loot. Get that loot cleaned up. What was the question we had? How have your strength helped you? Yeah, so I think talking is one of my strengths. I can basically talk about anything. If you watch my content, you know, on any given vehicle, a video, I always say vehicle when I'm in my vehicle, uh, any given video, you are very unlikely to find a moment where I am silent for more than three seconds at a time. Whereas if you watch really any Twitch stream that someone brings over to YouTube, like, a lot of streamers post their uh, Twitch streams on YouTube just to make a little extra revenue and kind of build a presence on another platform. But if you watch any of them, there's a lot of silence. Like there are eight seconds of silence, 15, they're looking at chat and instead of talking, they're reading or, or whatever. They're just really focused on the game. I, I don't enjoy that, you know? So I think that's one of my greatest strengths as like a content creator is that my videos actually contain like, cause don't get me wrong, my videos, not super amazing. I'm, I'm grateful that you're here, but I'm not really doing anything inventive or amazing on my channel. It's it's very much just uh, let's plays and, and me talking about my personal life. So I totally get, you know, why this wouldn't appeal to a lot of people um, necessarily. Uh, you know, obviously a targeted video is much better if I, if I made, you know, a video about a specific, like the most viewed thing on my channel, of course, is my tutorial series which is a focused series where I'm talking about very specific topics for people to learn something. Why am I not getting full? I'm eating so much. How are we doing calorie wise, by the way? We're normal weight. You look to be pretty healthy weight with some fat to last you through the winter, but nothing excessive. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we've been getting those calorie messages anymore. Obviously eating meat every day really helped with that. We should go hunting again. Uh, we obviously we saw a lot of dogs on the road 
that we could have sourced for more meat, but I said, oh, we just got a moose, we don't need meat, and now we are out of meat again, and I really should have done something about that. Uh, oh, well. Oh, and this Mr. Lappin, I haven't been out there in a while. Lappin needs logs. Yeah, I'm probably never gonna do that, my friend. It's just too time consuming, too many calories burned. A little baby town over here, Lebanon. Um, I don't know. My voice is very cracky today. I keep hearing it sound like I'm in the middle of puberty. Did we ever go to that doctor's office? Didn't we burn that down? What did we burn down? Oh, it was a veterinary clinic. Yeah. Maybe we should go to that doctor's office. I don't know if we've been over there. We probably should explore a little. We haven't done that in a while. We've been very focused on, on vehicle work. Uh, but oh, according to my timer, that's an issue for next week or next video. Everybody, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video thus far and are enjoying the series as a whole. I, of course, will be back with more Cataclysm content in the near future. Thanks for being here, and I'll see you next time.